you mentioned that the definition of metritis is a watery, foul-smelling, red-brownish discharge. So um, can you show us how it is diagnosed uh, and the technique that you guys use to diagnose metritis? So the technique that we usually use is uh, using this tool, the metric check. There are other techniques that might be used too. So uh, it's very often like I don't see this used. Uh, this is mainly used in research. I don't see this being used very often in, in the field. Usually they uh, have someone that they uh, suspect that cow has metritis or if they're monitoring cows based on day, uh, days in milk, they use a uh, rectal palpation. So they palpate the uterus and try to massage the uterus to exter exteriorize the uterine content. And that way, if they uh, see a fall smelling red, brownish, watery discharge, uh, then they, they can detect metritis on that manner. We use this just because we believe it's uh, easier and it's more consistent to uh, the research we do. In other parts of the world too, where uh, people have drugs that they can treat endometritis, that it's another uterine disease uh, that is caused by, uh, caused by similar bacteria, but it happens later on lactation, like after uh, the first month, uh, they use this a lot like in the field as well. So veterinarians and herd managers, they use this. So it's pretty much like this little uh, rubber cup here, looks like a little umbrella uh, with this metal uh, device here. So you introduce this into the vaginal canal of the cow and exteriorize the vaginal content. So for example, uh, endometritis would be characterized by, by a purulent or mucopurulent discharge. Yes. Uh, metritis, that is not, uh, for whenever you're looking for metritis, that purulent or mucopurulent discharge is not indicative of disease. It's not metritis. So okay. that should only be considered for whenever you're doing endometritis. Which is after three weeks exactly. from calving. Generally, people d don't look for it until like the first, uh, after the first month of lactation is over. Uh, so to use this, uh, we come here and when we uh, clean uh, the uh, perino region of the cow, use like alcohol 70% and try to clean this, uh, make sure that it's as clean as possible, uh, that we're not like bringing any uh, fecal matter into the vagina or to the birth canal of the cow, make sure that we're not like causing any uh, harm. And then you try to exteriorize the contents. Usually you can catch the contents right here too. You can smell, it has the smell of metritis. So if you wanna show here, very watery, the color is a classic color of metritis, red, brownish. So this cow has metritis. So uh, we could also, just for our own purpose, so after this, we have to clean this super well, because again, we don't want to bring any of this to the next cow that we're looking at. So, uh, so we use uh, alcohol plus a uh, paper towel. And and do this again, make sure that all of the, those uterine contents, it's out of the device. And before I even move to the next cow, I kind of use alcohol again. Uh, people might also use other solutions like chlorhexidine as well to clean this device until we move to the next cow. So Vinicius, you mentioned that some cases of metritis may also have systemic signs such as a cow can be depressed, you know, walk a little bit less. They can have also reduced appetite and intake. And we can measure some of those things with wearable precision technologies, right? Uh, pedometers, collars, um, but also some of these areas have uh, milk meters and they can measure uh, milk weights, how much milk cows are producing. How can this be used to um, detect some of these cows that may have metritis and also some systemic signs. Yeah. Uh, so uh, some dairies, they use uh, milk production, as you said, as a, uh, as a way to monitor cows that might have metritis or any other disease like displaced abomasum or ketosis or mastitis. Uh, so we know that uh, half or primiparous cows 
are expected to increase their daily milk production in the beginning of lactation by 4%, while multiparous cows increase their daily milk production by 7%. So every time there are like milk deviations that this criteria is not met, uh, the system flag those cows, uh, bringing uh, those cows to the attention of the farm workers so they can come and do a more thorough physical exam to those cows to understand what disease those cows might be experiencing that are leading to that uh, decrease in milk production. Okay. So when employees use this technology, basically uh, they can come, say, with a reader and, and read the history of the cow and see if she's down in production or if she's flagged and then she knows that they need to check that cow, for example? Uh, absolutely. That's something that people uh, use yeah. and a lot of times they just combine that to their usual protocol of monitoring. As we said, we uh, generally use uh, four days in milk, seven days in milk and then days in milk. So that way you can like as you can see, there are too many cow, uh, cows here, so you're not able to check all the cows. But using that system, plus with this uh, monitoring protocol, might make the work feasible. And if they have some of these precision technologies, they can also combine it with, say, low activity as well and, and, and use that? Absolutely. That's something that is being used by many farms around the country.